defense and one of the sharpest openings in the modern chess theory. Now, after d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, d5. This is the <coughs> uh, normal and uh, most popular way of playing Grunfeld defense. Of course, it can be done differently. Na d4, knight f6, c4, g6, and even if white does not play knight c3, but goes something like knight f3, bishop g7, g3, castle, bishop g2, and d5. That's also Grunfeld defense. Now, what is Grunfeld? Grunfeld are the positions that where black plays g6 and bishop g7, fianchetto their bishop, and then they play d5. The idea is to fianchetto the bishop and confront uh, white in the center with d5, trying, giving white preferred center and at playing against it. So let's cover some basic uh, variations. Now, if your opening repertoire is not very strong, and if you are not equally good in many different, in all your openings, whatever your openings you play, I wouldn't recommend you to play Grunfeld because when you play Grunfeld, there is one big problem for black. It's not a problem for very experienced chess players with a very solid opening repertoire and because they have played it many times. They already have their repertoire established and they spend a lot of time on it. But if you have to work on various different parts of your opening preparation, I wouldn't advise you to play Grunfeld. The reason is because you have to study a lot and mostly white chooses variation of Grunfeld. White chooses, for example, after d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, d5. White can play c takes d, knight f3, or even after c takes d, knight takes d5. There are a lot of different continuations. White can also play bishop f4 variation, bishop g5 variation. White is in commanding seat as far as choosing certain variation goes. Black has to be prepared very well against, because this is very active opening, and if you misplay a little, you will face a lot of problems. So as for white goes, if you play d4, knight f6, c4, g6, um, knight c3, d5, the simple variation I would recommend, the simple variation that gives you, that you can learn within minutes. Well, that will be knight f3, bishop g7, and bishop g5. Now you're threatening knight, bishop takes f6, followed by c takes d, and after knight e4, c takes d, knight takes g5, knight takes g5, e6 is the main continuation for black. Black is attacking, attacking a, a white knight, and now white plays knight f3 back, e d, and e3. This is this very, very simple continuation for white. Gives you um, very solid positions, and later on you should probably play bishop d3, castling, and playing a3 and b4, or rook b1 and b4, play against black's uh, uh, queen side, which called uh, pawn minority attack. So this is the simple continuation. I would recommend if you want to learn quickly. Of course, main positions after CD knight takes CD knight takes D5 and E4, they are positions here. They are main positions and maybe very sharp, sharp, and very well analyzed and very deep analyzed. I wouldn't recommend you to play those positions unless you know whole variation, all those, all those variations upside down and inside out. So uh, uh, the other continuation, which I would recommend for actually this interesting continuation for white, is c takes d, knight takes d5, 
followed by g3 or knight f3. Well, let's say knight f3, bishop g7, g3, castle, bishop g2, knight c6, castles. And this is very well-known position that can be, you can get this position many different ways for black, through many different orders, many different move orders. And main move in this position for black is knight b6 attacking the d4 pawn. I covered this opening in my red series of uh, openings uh, on a Grunfeld defense tape. Well, we can go through this now again, and I tell you what I would recommend to play here. The simple main move in these positions is e3, e5, d5, and knight a5, or knight e7. This is the theory, main theory. Move I recommend to play, and actually I think is just as good as the main move e3, is bishop f4. Now after bishop f4, uh, black is practically forced to play knight takes d4. Now if they don't play knight takes d4, they will have certain problems. For instance, if they go bishop g4, we're going to go d5, and they're going to they're gonna have some problems where to, how to place the pieces. So on a move like knight a5, maybe we go knight e5, and black is not doing well. So the other continuation is bishop e6, which was played against me by one international master. And on bishop e6, I think the best move is queen c1. This is a very strong move. Now white has black, white has a positional threat to play rook d1 followed by e4, and black is going to face some problems unless they play what my opponent played, knight takes d4, knight takes d4, queen takes d4, and bishop takes b7, rook b8, and notice you must play bishop f3 and not bishop g2. After bishop g2, position is absolutely equal. After bishop g2, after bishop f3, white has some advantage, and here is why. If you go bishop g2, black goes knight a4, and they put a lot of pressure on a dark on a1, h8 diagonal and pawn on b2. And if white plays rook d1, then simply knight takes c3. You see, white cannot play rook takes d4 because knight takes e2 followed by knight takes c1 and black wins. So that's why, that's why white's bishop from b7 had to retreat to f3. Now after knight a4, white can play rook d1 and black does not have knight takes c3 since e2 pawn is protected. So then black will have to go queen b4 and this position is better for white. Well, let's look at it. Um, <coughs> let's look at it after knight a4, rook d1, queen b4. Simply maybe, maybe even knight takes a4, queen takes a4, and rook d2. This is, this is better position for white, has a better pawn structure. They have just as good two bishops. We don't want to go into details of this position. But let me tell you what happened in my game. And my opponent did not play knight c4, knight a4. He did play knight c4. And after rook d1, queen b4, and rook b1, um, well, I got an advantage. I got a, a solid advantage. Actually, actually, I think the move was knight d5. Bishop takes d5, bishop takes d5. This position is better for uh, white. We can spend some time on it and you can come to the same conclusion. So what I would recommend, one of two lines is simply what we want to do, we want to give you 
easy system on every opening that can be played against you. That's like a guide to various different openings. So if you play for white, what I would recommend again, once more, quick overview, d4, knight, f6, c4, g6, knight, c3, d5. Now, one variation is knight f3, bishop g7, and bishop g5. It's one way to get frozen pawn structure and very clear plan for the middle game after knight e4. Cd, knight takes g5, knight takes g5, e6, knight f3, e d, e3. And we just talked about this position. And the other way to play is just to fianchetto the bishop. And uh, that's how it might go. d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, d5. Um, cd, knight takes d5, knight f3, bishop g7, g3. Castle, bishop g2, knight c6. White castles and knight b6. After bishop f4, that's where we uh, said that Black practically has to play knight takes d4 because the move we just analyzed, bishop e6, is not a good move. So knight takes d4, knight takes d4. And here black has three choices. They can play bishop takes d4, they can play queen takes d4, and they can play e5 move. Actually, all, this, all those moves were played against me. And I think I managed pretty much get an advantage in every one of these games. So let's look, let's start in a random order with bishop takes d4, knight to b5. Now we're attacking the bishop. If bishop takes b2, we simply play rook to b1. Now black has to retreat the bishop, even if they ex whether they exchange queens on d1 or not first. It doesn't really make much difference. And after bishop goes back, the knight takes c7. And after rook b8, maybe even knight d5 simply. Maybe it's just simply queen takes d8, rook takes d8, followed by knight d5, hitting rook on b8 and pawn on e7. White has clear advantage. So let's look at other continuations. Let's look at other continuations for, for, <coughs> for black. In the position where we play knight takes d4, and it's a black's move, so they can also play queen takes d4. But then again, we have to play the similar. Queen takes d4, bishop takes d4. Remember, you have to exchange queens to play knight b5, hitting the bishop. <coughs> and after <coughs> bishop takes b2, and rook b1, <coughs> bishop f6, knight takes c7, and rook b8, knight d5. Still, white has some advantage in this position. No matter what black plays, white is better. The interesting move, and uh, probably the it's the main move in this position, not to take knight with a bishop or with a queen, but to play e5. After e5, I believe white still has an advantage. What they should play, it's knight c6, uh, queen takes d1. Well, notice that if black plays b takes c, after bishop e3, black has lots of problems with the c pawns, double c pawn on c file, and white is going to play rook c1. You see the bishop on g7 is locked with its own pawn on e5, and white can simply go knight e4 and knight c5. It's a serious advantage for white. However, after knight c6, black plays queen takes d1, knight e7, check. That's a good option. King h8. Actually, that's not how we get this. Uh, bishop is on f4. We went knight c6, queen takes d1, knight e7, check. Those are the best moves for both sides. King h8, rook f takes d1, 
and pawn takes f4. Now white plays knight takes c8, rook a takes c8, bishop takes b7, rook b8, and bishop a4, a6. And after fg and hg, this is the critical position of whole variation, and I believe white has some advantage. Now let's check. Bishop takes c3, bc, and knight a4 looks very strong. Uh, because white cannot play rook d7 due to uh, knight c5 move. Also, c3 pawn is hanging, and black is threatening to play rook b2. Looks like black is better here, but rook d5 is very difficult move in this position to find. Guarantees white some advantage. If black plays knight takes c3, simple rook a5. Black has an extra pawn, but they are not happy in this position because rook c1 is coming and rook takes c7. Uh, just take my word for it, and you can just double check it yourself on your software program so that this is a better position for white. So those two recommendations is all you need to know if you face uh, Grunfeld defense. And if you play with white, you have, number one, you have solid position. And number two, you would know what to play after that opening, after your position, what is the plan for the final opening position. And you're guaranteed to get some advantage. I'm not guaranteeing big advantage because you did not choose the sharpest continuation and very ambitious. This is a very conservative way of getting comfortable position and have a, a good window for the middle game in Greenfield defense. That will cover our observation of the Greenfield defense. This is Grandmaster Damien Lemos here for onlinechesslessons.net. First of all, I hope you enjoyed um, this video. If you would like to receive more free chess videos from us, you can just click the subscribe button below. I would also highly recommend signing up for my free mail course, The 10 Grandmaster Secrets to Dominate Chess. During this exclusive course from onlinechesslessons.net, I'll share with you my own Grandmaster shortcuts to effective attacking, defending and growth hacks to improving your chess without um, complicated books or memorization. So sign up by clicking the sidebar on the right and I know you won't be disappointed. Once more this is Damien uh, for onlinechesslessons.net and I'll see you um, in my videos. Thank you.